So let's talk about phylogenetic trees, which are how we represent the evolutionary relationships among groups of organisms. So what I have here is a tree that shows a group of mammals from the camel, the peccary, which is a wild pig, and the domestic pig, the hippo, the whale, the deer, and the cow. This seems uh, a little unusual, which is why I chose this tree, because yes, hippos and whales are related to cows and pigs. I know, who would have thought? Um, so when we draw a phylogenetic tree, what we're trying to show is which organisms are more closely related to which others and what might have been the common ancestor. In this case, uh, the camel is what we call an outgroup. Um, so it is, let me try to write on here. Oop, that is not pretty. Outgroup. And the outgroup means that it is closely related to the others, um, but does not have all of the characteristics of the um, the other things on the tree. These areas where two groups meet, these are called nodes. And nodes represent a common ancestor. And so the way you can tell which organisms are more closely related is you can just count the nodes between them. So to go from a peccary to the pig, you only need one node. So those are very closely related. And we call those sister species. Sister species are the most closely related pair of species. And then to get from the uh, pig to say the whale, you have to go through three nodes. One here, two here, three here. Oops, sorry, three here, I can't count, can I? Four here, uh, ignore that three. You have to go through four nodes is what I meant. Um, and so the whale is much less closely related to the pig than it is to the, um, to the hippo where there's only one node between them, okay? So that's how you read a phylogenetic tree. Oops, good for me, okay. Let's erase all of that, Ooh, everything. Do, do, do. Erase, 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 erase. There we go, okay. A group of organisms that all share a common ancestor is called a monophyletic group. And a monophyletic group is um, the common ancestor and all of the species that derived from it. So the common, the monophyletic group of, of mammals is here that I just circled. It includes everything that has a mammary gland which is this trait right there in the red. So we can mark on our phylogenetic tree which traits evolved when. So marsupials, they are mammals, they have mammary glands and uh, they have hair, but they don't have a placenta. So whoops, the placenta developed later. So everything above this line has a placenta. The lion has a placenta, but it doesn't have a stirrup-shaped ear bone. All of these things, the cow, the human, the gorilla, all have a stirrup-shaped ear bone. The um, big brain develops there. So humans and gorillas and chimpanzees have relatively large brains, although the human brain is much, much larger. Um, and then the prehensile hand that can grab things is also a trait shared by humans and gorillas. Now, if we were to circle the, let's say, the 
um, bird and the marsupial and the lion, like that. That is not a monophyletic group. That is a paraphyletic group. So that is not a group of organisms that are all evolutionary related, um, although they do share a common ancestor down here. Uh, it's not a monophyletic group because it is excluding some of the ancestors, okay? So let's look over here. Um, if we look at the group of amphibians, the amphibians by themselves are a monophyletic group. But if we wanted to look at the amphibians and the reptiles, that would not be a monophyletic group because the common ancestor of all of those is back here. And so the monophyletic group would have to include the mammals as well. So how do we make a phylogenetic tree? First of all, the easiest way to make a phylogenetic tree is just by looking at traits. So we consider which traits are present and or absent in each species. Then we group together species that share common traits and we then figure out which ones have the most traits in common. And we put those together as sister uh, species and then the ones that they share less with, we put on a different branch. So here we have another tree um, showing the up here, number one, is the common ancestor of everything on this tree. And it includes the lungfishes, which uh, are, as they sound, they're fish with lungs. That's them here. The lungfishes are fish, um, so they, they are not a land animal. Everything else on here are land animals. Then we have the development of tetrapod limbs, tetra meaning four, so these are four-limbed animals. So everything here, from here up, has four limbs. Number two, that node, uh, represents the common ancestor of all of these four-limbed animals. So this is something that had four limbs and then diverged on one branch to the amphibians and on the other, another branch developed an amnion. That's a characteristic of an egg that enables an egg to be laid out of the water. So this, this organism number three has um, amnion, everything here has an amnion, et cetera, et cetera, All right? So let's talk about ways to draw a phylogenetic tree. Um, and I'm going to discard, okay. Um, I'm gonna post another video of a worksheet that you can do uh, showing how to do a phylogenetic tree. So you can do some on your own.